Well, hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the GI Justin channel. I've got uh, another big story for you guys today that, that I really want to bring to your attention. And we've got some interesting things going on with, uh, with a story that we touched on yesterday where it kind of looks like some, uh, some people are not super happy with the information that I'm putting out. And I've kind of had to dial it back a little bit. So today we're going to shift gears and talk with you about kind of what's going on in Sudan again. Um, interesting thing there is it turns out, according to the World Health Organization, who basically is monitoring what's going on in the, the basic civil war that's happening in Sudan right now, that there is a very high risk of a biological hazard or a biological attack because one of the sides fighting in this conflict has seized a public laboratory with samples of some very, very serious diseases. So, you know, a, a lot of these diseases come out of, of Africa, like Ebola and Marburg that we've talked about recently. And I'm going to link that up here in the, in the top so you can go back and look at that if you haven't already done so. But, you know, a lot of these, these really virulent diseases that have very high mortality rates come from areas of Africa like Sudan where they store these things to try and learn more about them and figure this, uh, figure this situation out. So basically this doctor, uh, basically who represents the World Health Organization in, in Sudan, came out and said, there is a huge biological risk associated with the occupation of the central health lab by one of the fighting parties as it gives them the ability to utilize biological weapons. Thing that's kind of troubling about that is these are non-state actors. So if somebody decided that they wanted to, to do something like that, who's to hold accountable? You know, and, and along that same token, if, if this country continues along this path of, of civil war, what happens if the side that is losing happens to be the side that decides, hey, you know, we're losing, Let's go ahead and throw the baby out with the bathwater and fire up uh, Marburg and Ebola. We'll get ourselves out of here, fire this thing up, and when there's no more rival factions left because they're all dying in the streets, maybe we can roll back in and, uh, and just take it over because that's the thing that, that we talked about with Marburg and Ebola is their mortality rate is so high that on a long enough timeline, if these guys were to decide that that is the, the route they wanted to take, they could just wait it out, cordon off the area, drop in these, uh, these viruses and wait until there's nobody left, roll back in, take it right over. That's, that's one of the things that's super troubling to me about this too. And both sides have shown that they are unwilling to follow up with the ceasefires that they've already agreed to. So Monday, our secretary of state, Anthony Blinken announced that he basically helped broker a 72 hour ceasefire to Maybe get this, uh, this situation with the World Health Organization and this, uh, this I, I guess we want to call it laboratory, under control and to help get you know, all the refugees out and help get people that are trapped in the country out of the country. And the thing that is, that is bad about this, the, the Sudanese military and then this, the, basically the, their rival, which are called the Rapid Support Forces, which are led by another general, said they would observe the, the, the ceasefire. And kind of the way they worded it was kind of interesting because it says, the truce will hold on the condition that the rebels commit to stopping all hostilities. So basically they're trying to sneak a surrender into this whole thing. And the, the thing that makes it, I think, kind of hollow and false is even as the ceasefires being announced when they kind of go live, so to speak, to Khartoum, which is the capital of Sudan, you can hear airplanes, like warplanes, flying overhead. There's, there's gunfire. You can hear tanks shooting at each other. I mean, they have no intention of actually stopping. And part of the deal there is how do we stabilize this possibility of biological attacks against each other? Because the other thing is, too, a lot of money to be made in biological weapons. And there are a lot of groups in the world who would love nothing more than to get their hands on some of these biologicals, especially if they have known origins like Africa. You know, a, a perfect example, you take Marburg, again, we'll use that as the example since we've talked about it, and say, drop it somewhere, wherever. 
All you've got to do then is sit back and watch because it has already it has already been put out there that it comes from Africa. So they don't have to concern themselves with the possibility of it being traced back to them. So a little bit of a shorter video today. I just want to touch on this while, like I said, while I'm still dealing with this other stuff from, uh, from yesterday's video that I'll get into it at a, at a later time. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching the channel and subscribing and, and liking the videos and commenting on this. I really want to talk with you guys more about this stuff too because I, I worry about this laboratory and I worry about the situation in Sudan in general sparking larger issues. So thank you guys so much for your time and have an awesome day.